Hey guys, this is Mr. Kennedy back with video 28 and we're going to be dealing with populations and some characteristics of populations because it should be a pretty short video. Um, when we thought about how populations actually grow, there are three important characteristics to remember and they are geographic distribution, density, and growth rate. And we're going to go over each one of these in more detail. Now let's go over geographic distribution first. Geographic distribution is talking about the range of an organism. Now the range is simply the area inhabited by the population, whatever you're talking about. Now, a snail's range would be a lot less than, let's say, a bird's range. Um, human range, you know, we can go anywhere in the planet, so we have the largest of all the ranges, I guess. But geographic distribution is going to affect population size. The second thing is population density. And that's exactly what it says. It's the number of individuals per unit area. Now, New York City is more heavily populated density-wise than a town in North Carolina. So population density is going to affect uh, how the growth of populations are. And the last one is population growth. Now there are three specific factors that you need to know for the test that are dealing with population growth. And they are number of births, number of deaths, and immigration with an I and immigration with an E. Now let's look at the last one here. You know births and deaths, but the I means when individuals come into an area, and the E means when something leaves the area. Now, it makes sense to you that if the number of births are more than deaths, then the population is growing. If the number of deaths are more than births, then the population is going down. But think about what immigration and immigration. If the number of individuals coming into a population are greater than leaving, the population is also going to be going up. So that is, these three factors affect population growth. Now, when we talk about population growth, we can basically put them on two different charts. The first one is called exponential growth. Exponential growth would be when the population is growing without any limits to it whatsoever. It's under ideal conditions. Now, what I mean by ideal, I mean the very best conditions whatsoever. Um, there's only one population that I can think of that grows naturally that is still in this exponential growth and that's humans we've not reached our carrying capacity yet so we are continuously growing upward we have all the food we need shelter water mates etc so we continuously grow now other populations will start out growing exponentially but they will all reach a carrying capacity all right now oh and I forgot to tell you the exponential growth curve is called a j-shaped curve which you'll see in a couple of slides now, the way most populations grow is what's called a logistic growth curve. A logistic growth curve is when a population grows slowly and then stops at a period after exponential growth. Um, as a result, it becomes less available. Um, resource, as resources become less available, um, the growth of the population is going to stop, and that makes sense. You know, population can't just grow continuously, grow upward and upward and upward indefinitely if you have a chance of running out of food, shelter, etc. Now this is called an S-shaped curve. Now I think I can explain these two a lot better on the graph. So carrying capacity is when that this population will continue to grow until it reaches. And once it reaches this point, that's the maximum number of individuals the population can support indefinitely. Please know this, this, this word, okay? Now let's explain them on this graph right here. The J-shaped curve is showing a population growing without limits. You know, there's nothing stopping. It's going to continue to grow. Now, it doesn't make sense that most populations are going to be this way. They're going to eventually hit a, a platform up here where it can't continue to grow. It's going to limit resources. Well, that leads us to the logistic growth curve. That platform is represented by a K. It's called the carrying capacity. And if you'll notice, the first part of the logistic growth curve is actually an exponential or J curve. But as it gets closer... It actually starts to flux up and down. It actually moves up and down like this across the carrying capacity. As you go above the carrying capacity, individuals die off. And as you go below, it's going to grow. So it continuously fluxes back and forth. That's called a dynamic equilibrium. Well, anyway, I hope you understand J-shaped and S-shaped growth curves. And if you don't, please don't hesitate to ask me tomorrow.